I recently did a review of the Snapmaker 2.2 and while going over the FAQ section on their website, one of the FAQs had mentioned that the Snapmaker 2.0 can engrave on food. I'll be using a diode laser machine to be more specific the 1.6 watt Snapmaker 2.0. The general idea is the same for all diode laser machines. A more powerful laser will be able to do the job quicker, which is a good thing for engraving on food. The faster you can engrave, the less dry the food becomes. I've got some bananas, bread, and some store bought cookies to experiment on. We'll see if we can engrave on all of these and see how it tastes. Talking about the practical applications of laser engraving food, there aren't many. But if you are someone who makes cookies or baked stuff, you can use laser engraving to customize your product and make them look cool. You can also use laser engraving to make markings on food to create beautiful food art. So the first thing that you need to do is to figure out the right settings. And for that, we'll print out a test pattern on a piece of bread. I'm using Lightburn as I find it easier to use. The Snapmaker 2.0 comes with a 1.6 watt laser module which is really low power. So it's better to run it at 100% power for engraving food. If you try to engrave at lower speeds, it is going to take longer which means whatever you are engraving will become dry. So I would suggest you engrave at the maximum possible speed. In my case, I will be running the laser at 100% power and I want to figure out the right speed. From my previous experiences, I guess it would be enough to test the speeds between 350 mm per minute and 500 mm per minute. So it took about 4.5 minutes to complete. The results don't look great but you get recognizable marks on it. I was running the engraving at 0.2 mm line spacing so this can definitely get better. At 425 mm per minute the engraving is good. I wouldn't go any faster than that on this machine. If you look close you will notice that at 350 mm per minute the engraving is not complete. This is because bread has lots of holes and the surface is not even. This means the laser doesn't stay in focus at all places on the surface. So if you are engraving food on a laser, you need to make sure the surface is even as much as possible. You can also use a laser with a longer depth of focus. Usually the lenses for engraving have a short focal length and their depth of focus is less. Meaning the laser spot will go out of focus if the surface height changes. On the other hand, lenses for cutting has a longer focal length and a longer depth of focus. Which means even if the surface height changes, the laser spot will still be in focus. To be on the safer side, let's see how the engraving looks when I run it at 375 mm per minute. Here is the result of our first attempt at engraving bread. It took about an hour but the bread is totally dry now. But it does have that toasty feel to it. The engraving looks cool and has good contrast. However, I would not prefer to eat this as it's burnt too much for my taste. Next, we'll run it at 425 mm per minute and this time around I'll also change the image to a text and see how it goes. Texts are clear but I would suggest you to stick to thick fonts as engraving thin lines onto food can be a challenge due to their texture. When engraving food, the laser heats up the surface of the material, the top layer gets burnt and leaves a mark on it. This means most laser engraved foods are safe to consume. I ate one of the pieces that I made and it didn't taste bad. But I would prefer a regular toast to this. If you really need designs on toast, it's better to toast them first and then engrave them. It will be faster and will definitely taste better. And for speed, if you have a 10 watt laser machine, you can make this same design in about 4 minutes as I did on my 10 watt Comco laser. If you want to engrave food on a diode laser, you should do it using a 10 watt machine and at high speeds. This will prevent overburning and a powerful laser will also allow you to engrave faster which means whatever you are engraving wouldn't become too dry. If you have a CO2 laser, you can do this much faster. I will soon bring out a video on how to use a CO2 laser to engrave food. Next up, we have some store bought cookies. Laser engraving can be used to customize cookies. I will try to engrave some text on the cookie using the same settings I used for bread and let's see how it goes. I had to run the test multiple times to figure out the right speed to do it and for this laser the engraving looks good at 300 mm per minute and 100% power. Another food item that you can engrave is fruit. You can engrave on the peel and it gives a good contrast engraving. 
We can also engrave on cut fruits to make fun designs on them. I have some bananas here with me. Let's see what it looks like when we engrave on the peel and on the cut pieces. I engraved banana at 425 mm per minute on the peel and at 300 mm per minute on the cut pieces. The results are better when compared with the other two items that I engraved. It has really good contrast and perfect edges. So that was fun, we managed to engrave a bunch of food items on a diode laser engraver. It's a pretty straightforward process. If you have done this, do tell me about it in the comments below. And if you want me to try some other stuff using lasers, mention that as well. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I will be coming up with tutorial videos regularly. So thank you for watching. Until next time.